Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, would you please take your seats? Well, dear friends, uh, very welcome to this 2009 John W. Holmes Memorial Lecture. Um, traveling, as we all know, affects us in various ways. For one thing, our names may change when we shift places. For instance, uh, back in Sweden, I'm Christo Jönsson. When I cross the Atlantic, inevitably I become Chris Johnson. Uh, had today's speaker been living in Europe, he would have been Thomas Weiss. And we all know him as Tom Wies. Well, Tom requires very little introduction. Few persons, if any, embody Aikens the way Tom does. He was executive director of Aikens between 1992 and 1998. He's been co-editor of Global Governance between 2001 and 2005. He's serving as chair of Aikens since 2006 until this meeting in 2009. He's been co-director of the UN Intellectual History Project and co-editor of the Oxford Handbook on the United Nations, which was launched at the Aikens Annual Meeting in New York in 2007. Tom, as you know, is author, co-author, editor, co-editor of two numerous books to be mentioned and articles and a textbook, which I understand is now uh, coming out in its uh, much-used textbook, which is coming out in its sixth edition, is written on such hot topics on the UN agenda as humanitarian intervention, responsibility to protect, and terrorism. I won't even try to start listing or exemplifying all his, uh, uh, his wide publication record Instead, I want to go back to his very first book, International Bureaucracy, published in 1975, uh, right after he has, had gotten his PhD from Princeton the year before. It's a book that I happen to have in my bookshelf. Um, and I looked at it. Uh, it's, it's uh, before going here, uh, it's uh, about, ILO and UNICEF, and the working hypothesis on the, one of the first pages goes like this, and I quote, the unwieldy administrative structure of functional secretariats are counterproductive to the idealistic goals that they have been created to pursue. And I also noted the very, f the final sentence of the book, and again I quote, it may prove to be one of the great ironies of history that the hope for the future survival of pragmatism lies in utopian ideas, ideals. And I think this final sentence in the first book catches Tom's approach ever since very well. On the one hand, there's this pragmatism, policy relevance, he has served at uh, UNCTAD, UNITAR, ILO, and other organizations. He is consultant for foundations, IGOs, and NGOs. He is, in short, part of what he himself has described as the third UN. And it's also typical that his latest book is labeled What's Wrong with the United Nations and How to Fix It. On the other hand, the ideals upon which the UN's, UN system is built have always been the compass for Tom as researcher and practitioner. Tom is now leaving as chair of Aikens, but as Shakespeare wrote in one of his plays, every exit is an in entrance somewhere else. 
And in Tom's case, he's entered as president of the International Studies Association, ISA. And uh, also typical of Tom is that he had his inaugurating address with a build topic, what happened to the idea of world government? Well, today Tom returns to the subject area of his first book. And today he's going to talk about reinvigorating the international civil service. Please welcome Tom Weiss. I deserve a raise, Krister. I'm going to have you write a letter to the provost. Um, thanks, really, for those excessively kind words of introduction. Um, I'm never quite sure how one of my two irreverent daughters would conduct the same uh, introduction, actually. Uh, several years ago, I w it wasn't an Aikens meeting, but I was leaving for some place, forgotten some piece of paper, ran back upstairs. And I heard one of them saying, you know, I haven't a clue what he does. I haven't a clue why anyone would pay him to say anything. I would pay him to keep quiet. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. It's, it's a pleasure to join so many friends, colleagues, mentors who've given this talk in the past. I think it's a testament, Patty, to the quality of the, the network, if you just le read the people who are on the back of the brochure. So it's an honor to give this 20th, I think 20th, um, Holmes lecture, named in honor of a distinguished Canadian diplomat who died before he could get to his first, uh, or just after the first Aikens meeting. Um, and uh, Trinidadians, if they haven't already, will discover why so many of us devote a considerable portion of our professional uh, energy to this institution, of which we're not only proud, but kind of fond. Well, Christer, thanks for citing those two books. It was actually the reason why I chose this topic. I thought when you get increasingly long in the tooth, it's time to go back and to come forward. Uh, it's also to demonstrate that I have no long-term or short-term memory loss. Um, I'm going to try to also mix in some insights from the Intellectual History Project, which um, was actually launched uh, with my colleagues Louis Emery and Richard Jolly after Jolly's Holmes Lecture in 1996. And the first book, of course, was done uh, under the supervision of Lee Gordanker who gave the first Holmes Lecture in 1990. I'm going to start by doing something we teach our students not to do, quote my colleagues and myself. The last sentence in, that, in the first book of the History Project says, people matter. Why this emphasis? It seems to me that I believe, after all these years, that there are creative contributions by individuals who work at the UN, whereas most of the time, most analysts stress the politics of the 192 member states that make it impossible, so-called, for the bloated bureaucracy to do anything. My proposition is different and fairly straightforward. The World Organization should rediscover some of the idealistic roots of the International Civil Service to make more room for creative idea mongers, as well as establish a more mobile personnel and career development path for the 21st century secretariat. I'm going to briefly try to do four things. Look at the origins of the concept, the problems that have developed, the logic of why I think reform makes sense, and then a couple of specific illustrations of things that have happened. I'm going to pull examples from peace and security, human rights, and uh, sustainable development. OK, so let me begin. What is this overwhelming bureaucracy which has underwhelming leadership at times. I'm going to focus, as Christer said, I've been concerned more recently with the third UN. And obviously, uh, Innes Claude long ago taught us we should look at the first UN, the member states, and the second UN, the people who were paid by it, the International Civil Service. And it's that chunk, the second UN, that I'm going to look at today. <laughs> 